Hi, welcome back to Unsightly Opinions. If you're new, my name's Tamara, and today we're gonna explore knitting as a fantastic accessible hobby. The weather's getting colder, I'm in a big fluffy sweater, there's snow on the ground, so why not take this beautiful blanket yarn and these round knitting needles and make ourselves a hat. Before we get into the main project, we're going to talk about all of the tools that you're going to need, all of the techniques, so you can practice them if you're new to knitting before you get into the main project. In this video, we're going to talk about doing a slip knot, doing a long tail cast on, doing a knit stitch, doing a purl stitch, how to drop stitches and how to cast off. So whether or not you're making a hat, this is an excellent video for all of the basic knitting techniques you're going to need for just about every project. Let's talk about how we're gonna do this project. So to follow along and do this with me, you're going to need any kind of yarn. I am using Yarnspirations Burnett Super Bulky Number no. 6 Blanket Yarn in the shade Shadow Purple. I am told that it's a rather dusty lavender shade. The reason I got this color is because it was on sale. Next, I am using 10 millimeter round knitting needles. You can do this project on straight knitting needles, you'll just have to alter the pattern a little bit. I have a pair of scissors. And lastly, I have rings. You can use any kind of rings that work for you. I just twisted up some wire, and this is entirely optional. You don't need these, these just make your life a lot easier. So you can keep track of how many stitches into your project you are. For those of you who are more advanced and already know how to knit, you can jump ahead to the timestamp on screen now. If you are a complete beginner, I am going to try and walk you through all of the steps and all of the techniques that you need to know before we get into the project. If you have some vision, I am using super bulky yarn today and thick needles on a contrasting black background in the hopes that some of you will be able to see what I'm doing. If you don't have enough usable vision or you are blind, I am going to try and describe what I'm doing in as many words and be as descriptive as possible so you can understand. But know that when I started learning how to knit, it took me about 10 times before I finally understood how things worked and where all the things were going. So if you get a little bit confused, don't get frustrated, you'll figure it out. So first things first, unravel a little bit of your yarn. First, let's talk about two important definitions. The yarn that is closest and connected to the ball is called your working yarn. That's where when we're typically knitting, we add stitches on and where our yarn comes from to make our project. Here, we have both our working yarn and our tail. So our tail is the piece that's further away from you that's got the loose end. So what I have is I have my yarn in front of me, tail end on the left, working yarn and ball on the right, and my yarn laid out perpendicular in front of me on the table. First, to do a slip knot, place your right palm flat on top of your yarn. I pick up the yarn in my right hand and turn my thumb towards the sky. Next, with my left hand, I pick up the tail end and wrap it counterclockwise around my entire hand so that it crosses over at the base of my palm. The working yarn should be towards me, the tail end should be further away from me. Next, I turn my right palm towards the sky and I pick up the yarn with my index finger and thumb in my left hand and slide just a small piece of that yarn underneath the strand that runs across my palm so it creates a new loop. Next, I grasp that little loop that we've created with my index finger and thumb in my left hand and pull my right hand out. With my right hand, I find the tail end and the working yarn and I pull tight. That's our slip knot. Let's do that a couple more times just so you can get the hang of it. Palm flat on the table on top of the yarn. I pick it up in my fist turn my thumb towards the sky, and continue with my left hand wrapping the yarn all the way around my palm till it crosses over at the base of my hand. My right hand turns towards the sky. My left hand picks up the yarn in my index finger and thumb and pushes it just underneath the strand that runs across my right palm. Once I've created that new little loop, my left hand grasps the new loop with the index finger and thumb, my right hand is removed, and then I find the tail end and the working yarn with my right hand, and I pull tight. Now, here's where you slip it on the needle. What I do when we start our long tail cast on is I make sure that my tail end is facing towards me and my working yarn is facing away from me. And I slide that loop onto the right side of my needle. Once it's on there, 
I pull the tail end until it's tight. Once I have my slip knot on and it's fastened securely, I hold it with my index finger and thumb so it doesn't slip off the tip of the needle. With my left hand, I come in with my bottom three fingers, my middle ring and pinky fingers, or third, fourth, and fifth fingers, and I pick up both the working yarn and the tail. I pull backwards so it should create two parallel pieces of yarn. Next, I slide my index finger and thumb between the two strands of yarn. Once your index finger and thumb are through the two strands, open them up wide so you make almost fake gun signs. Rotate your left hand so that your palm is more towards the sky. Bring the tip of the needle towards our thumb and touch it just underneath where the strand of yarn wraps around our thumb. Bring the tip of the needle from bottom to top through that strand so that it's around both your thumb and the tip of the needle. Next, once you have it around both, bring the tip of the needle towards your index finger so it touches just above the strand of yarn that's wrapping around your index finger. Slide the needle from top to bottom, not bottom to top, top to bottom, so closer to the tip of your finger towards your palm and bring it underneath that strand. Once it's underneath, bring the tip of the needle back towards your thumb and run it down the entire length of your thumb so it comes underneath that loop. Once it's there, slide your thumb out and pull the loop tight by pulling both the working yarn and the tail. So you should have two loops on your needle now. Let's do that again because I know there was a lot of things going on there. First, grab both the tail and the working yarn. Remember that the tail should be to the front and pick it up in your bottom three fingers, your third, fourth, and fifth fingers, leaving your index finger and thumb free. Pull taut so it creates two parallel bands of yarn. Bring your index finger and thumb through the bands from top to bottom. Once you have your index finger and thumb fed through the opening, open them wide like making fake gun signs. Rotate your left palm so that it's now facing more towards the sky. Doing so should create two loops around your thumb and your index finger. Next, bring the needle that's being held in your right hand towards the base of your thumb so it touches just underneath the loop wrapping around your thumb. Run the needle from bottom to top, so from the base of your thumb towards the top, sliding it underneath the strand of yarn on your thumb so it's around both your thumb and your index finger. Once there, Bring the tip of the needle towards your index finger and touch it just above where the strand of yarn wraps around. You're going to run your needle from top to bottom and bring that strand on your index finger onto the needle. Once it's there, bring the tip of the needle back to the tip of your thumb and slide it all the way down your thumb until it's past the loop that was on your thumb. Once there, remove your thumb from the loop and pull tight using both the working yarn and the tail. You don't have to worry about your tail from here on out, just ignore it. The only piece of yarn we're concerned with is the working yarn. First, I hold all of my cast on stitches in my left hand. You can figure out whatever way is most comfortable for you, just to make sure that the loops or the stitches don't slide off the tip of the needle before you want them to. Something that's important, your working yarn should always be at the back when you're doing a knit stitch. If it's at the front, just push it around to the back. It should be no problem. First, we're gonna bring our right needle towards the tip of our left needle. It slides just underneath the first loop from bottom to top. It should create almost an X with your needles. Where the needles touch and cross over, your right needle should be in behind and your left needle should be in front. Next, with your right hand, wrap the yarn counterclockwise around only the back needle until it comes in between where the X crosses over. Hold that yarn tight in your right hand. Slide the tip of the right needle down the shaft of the left needle until it comes just underneath that first loop. Once it's there, release that first loop from 
your left needle. So you slide it off the top. Let's do that again, because I know that can be confusing. Bring the tip of your right needle just underneath the first loop that's on your left needle. Slide it so both your left and right needles are through the loop. Your right needle should be behind and your left needle should be in front, creating an X shape. With your right hand, wrap your working yarn counterclockwise around your right needle or your back needle only. Bring the tip of your needle down the shaft of the left needle until it comes just underneath where that loop is on the left needle. Then once it's firmly on the right needle, you slide it off the left needle. The purl stitch is really similar to the knit stitch. In fact, it's exactly the opposite of what we just did for our knit stitch. It's really important to have our working yarn towards us. If it's away from you, just wrap it around so it comes in between your needles towards the front. With your right hand, bring your needles together and feed that first loop onto your right needle, the same way you would if you were doing a purl stitch, except this time our right needle is going to be in front of our left needle. We're still creating that X, but our right needle is now coming from top to bottom or right to left through that loop. With my right hand, I'm coming counterclockwise around my right needle or my front needle instead of the back one. Once I have it wrapped all the way around, you have to hold the yarn taut in your right hand and slide the tip of the needle towards the tip of the left needle so that it comes underneath the loop on your left needle. Once there and once firmly on your right needle, you can let it slide all the way off the left needle. Let's do that again. Your yarn is in front. Your working yarn is in front towards you. With your right hand, bring the tip of your right needle towards your left needle and slide it onto the first loop to, at the tip of your needle. You're sliding it on from top to bottom or right to left, however is easier for you to think about it. And then with your right hand, you're wrapping yarn counterclockwise around your front needle or your right needle. Once that yarn is wrapped all the way around counterclockwise, you bring the tip of your right needle underneath the loop that's still sitting on your left needle from base to tip. And then once it's there, once you've reached the tip, you let it fall off your left needle. So what I like to do in this hat is at one specific point, every time we come around, when we're close to the crown of our hat, we're gonna bring the stitches in closer. So we're gonna get fewer and fewer and fewer until we're left with maybe five stitches on our hat. So the way we do that is you knit or purl, whichever direction you're in. If you're working in the round like me, you'll be knitting all the way around. You'll knit to the point on your hat that you want to drop stitches. So what you're going to do this time is it's very similar to the knit stitch, but instead of picking up one stitch only, you're going to bring your right needle towards your left and you're gonna pick up two stitches. You're gonna wrap both loops onto your right needle. Instead of wrapping the yarn around, we're just gonna drop it off of our left needle onto our right. So we have two extra needles we have not touched. We haven't stitched on our right needle. Next, we're going to knit one more stitch and then we're gonna come back to those two loops that we created and we're gonna slide them over top of that next knit stitch that we just did and push them off the top of our needle. You can do this with your needle. I find it's easier to feel if I do it with my fingers. So we have just cast off two stitches. You just keep knitting and purling until you come to the next spot where you need to cast off. So we'll pretend that we're there already. I'm just gonna do one more knit stitch here and then say we want to cast off these next two stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring both of those loops onto my right needle, just as though we were gonna start our knit stitch, we're creating that X, but instead of wrapping the yarn around, we just slide our left needle out. So now we have those two loops on our right needle. We're gonna knit our next stitch and we're gonna slide it onto our right needle the way we usually would. Now, with those two loops that we did nothing with, we're gonna slide them over top of that knit, knit loop that we just created, and we're gonna push those two loops off the top of our needle, and that's gonna make them smaller. We went from eight stitches to four. 
first we need to do our long tail cast on. So how much are we going to need? I know I need about 52 stitches because I measured out on my yarn. I did a little test piece where I knit a few rows of 10 stitches and then multiplied that out by the circumference of my head. If you want a general rule of thumb for long tail cast on, they suggest that you need about four times the length of your total project. So for me today, I'm gonna wrap this yarn around my head four times. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna give myself just a little extra because I get scared. So I've got my extra long tail on the left and I've got my ball of yarn on the floor on the right. Now I'm gonna put my palm down on the table and do my slip knot the same way we did in the introduction. Next, I'm gonna find my needles and I'm gonna make sure that the tail end is towards me when I slide it onto the needle. If it's not, you can just pull it off and pull it around. Then I pull the tail end to tighten it up. You don't want it too tight, otherwise it's gonna be pretty difficult to knit. I'm gonna cast on 52 stitches. To start off my hat, I cast on 52 stitches or loops onto my needle, inserting a ring every 10 stitches to keep track of my count. All right, now that I've cast on my 52 stitches, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with the brim. Something that's really nice about working in the round is you kind of create your hat in a spiral as you knit around and around and around and around. One thing to watch out for if this is your first time is to make sure that your stitches don't get rotated around your needle. It really sucks when you create an infinity scarf or a loop that's got a bit of a twist in it so you can't actually complete your project. So watch out for that. For our brim, I'm gonna do knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. I'm not sure how it's gonna look with this super bulky yarn, but we're gonna give it a go anyways. And we're gonna just make it about probably an inch and a half to two inches wide on the brim. I don't want it to be able to fold over. If you want it to fold over, you obviously make it a lot longer than that so you can fold it over, but this is really bulky, so I don't think we wanna do that. So I'm just gonna knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And as I'm working my way around, knitting two, purling two, remember, after you've knit two, bring your yarn to the front before you purl two. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a little bit of a mess. I did my knit purl pattern round and round and round and round until I got about two inches of brim created, ending at where I started casting on. For me, I believe it was about eight rows. I also realized how terribly uncomfortable my dining room chairs are. All right, this is what we're working with so far. I've got my brim done, essentially. I've got my knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. It doesn't look like much right now, but it will when we're finished. If you like that ribbed look to your hat, if you want a chunky, really textured hat, you can just continue to do knit two, purl two all the way up. I like my brim to be different than the main body of my hat, so I'm gonna switch over now and do just knit, 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 knit all the way around until I get about five or six inches into my hat. Then we're gonna start casting off and finishing the hat off. Rather than have you watch another time lapse of me just sitting here knitting for the next two hours, I'm gonna skip ahead to when we start casting off. So I'll see you then. All right, I have just come and done my final spiral around this hat. I'm lined up with where I started and I'm gonna start bringing my stitches together, making it smaller so we're gonna come together at the crown of the head. So what I'm going to do is every time I encounter one of my rings, like I'm at right now, I am going to slide two stitches over, knit the next one, and then slide those two stitches off exactly the same way as we did in the beginning. So here, I've just crossed my ring over, so I'm going to come in and grab these two stitches, the same way I would if I was knitting them, slide them onto my right needle, and then I'm knitting my next stitch the exact same way I've done a thousand times before, and then you can come in with your needle and kind of pick up those stitches. I find it's typically a little easier for me to feel if I get in there with my hands and those stitches are a little tight. Um, and then you wanna slide them over top of that first stitch that you just knitted on. Every time I encountered a ring, I passed over, then cast off two stitches. I ran into a little bit of trouble when I got near the very, very end, so I grabbed a straight knitting needle just so I could get it finished. 
I don't know why I started dropping stitches or having difficulty, but maybe it was because it was well after midnight, my back hurt, and I was very tired. Anyways, we made it to the end. Now that I'm down to my final five stitches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around. I've cut myself a length of yarn. I didn't explain myself very well, so let me try again. Once I was down to my final five stitches, all I did was trim six extra inches of working yarn away from my project and loop it back through the stitches starting with the one furthest away from the loose yarn. Then all I did was pass the yarn to the inside of the hat and tie it off, trimming the excess. Then I went to the brim and weaved a little bit extra into the brim and trimmed the excess there too. And there you have it, one completed hat, everything knotted and nicely tucked and knitted in. I think it turned out okay. If you look at the top of the hat, it has a very nice kind of five-pointed almost star design that where we kind of brought our stitches in and kind of cast off. So I think all in all, this is a really nice toque. I love it even more when you make it in a really fine yarn, whatever's soft, whatever's comfy. I've made it in about a hundred different colors. It just depends on how many stitches you need to cast on. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions or comments or content that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comments down below. I love to hear from you. I try to get back to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. Hit all of those bells and buttons. If you wanna keep up to date with what's going on in my daily life, I have an accessible Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday night, and I have my other social media linked in the description box down below. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.